This is Lovin Osman reading Take Wing Temple. Take Wing Temple. We ran barefoot on pavement before a girl tripped on a rock, got third and fourth lips, a new hairline. We jumped from swings, aiming for grass beyond the gravel path. We flipped over the frame to float, weightless girls who didn't matter. There's a scar in the shape of Africa on my right knee, a faceless dime on my wrist. I expect flight, but brace to land on my back. How I could have loved you with that body, heart that instructs a girl to climb fences taller than her house, or fight a bully who already shaves her knees. What chords a pulse plucks? It plays in thumbs pressed together. Some night, I'd like to leap from the headboard, double up, wonder at the blood in our grins. About this poem. I started this poem when I was a girl hurtling toward the grass, a dark star, older than ferns but younger than water. I returned to it seasons ago when fatigued from the terror and from the vexation of reminding others that we matter. Because we are. Already. Because some people think they are the sun, the obvious and the oblivion, but are simply finite and soon done.
It is hard to think about my teen years, my room, my desk, my very being without the blues force that was Peter Green. Folks come to the blues in various ways. My dad had Ray Charles records, so there was Ray's voice and piano. Mahalia Jackson was my other deep intro. But I found Peter Green in those early imported Fleetwood Mac albums and then play on. I was injected with this world-weary young man's blues. Not the song, the life. His voice and guitar spoke to me directly. His blues songs were pure blues. His daring blues reconstructions led to epics like Green Man Alishi and Oh Well. Those made me wonder, how does someone go about writing a song, much less live in it? The blues took Peter years before his death at 73. For some artists, art is not an escape, but the demon that makes you run. I sense this real pain in his music from the start, and I hope he found his peace. My love to Peter Green for his towering art and sacrifice. Welcome to Brown Box. This is an offshoot of uh, Dylan Box. If you notice, there's nothing written on the box, hence Brown Box. Good, good title. Yes, absolutely. So uh, I'm, I'm Ryan and... Uh, I'm Chris. And uh, the, the gist of this show is we're each going to kind of uh, turn each other on to some music that we, uh, in our own personal collections, that the other person either may not be so familiar with or may not be so hip to. So that's just really quick, kind of just what, what we're looking at. Okay. You want to go first or... I have... Dylan of the Dead. No. Oh, hey. <laughs> what a classic. <laughs> I have one of the greatest Ooh. albums of all time. Okay. Uh, Fleetwood Max, then Play On. Okay. I think I bought this at, uh, it was some of a nice place, maybe Harris's. Or okay. Something. It was very Even the shelves were nice. There were kind of wooden shelves, and this was on display. And I go, wow, this is just, this like is a, a painting. beautiful album cover. And then I, you know, I flipped it over and go, Oh, it's Fleetwood oh, Mac. Okay. I know a little bit of, back then, I knew a little bit about Fleetwood Mac, and I knew that they were a blues band, and I knew a little, little bit about Peter Green, but probably, you know, this might be the first Fleetwood Mac album that I owned. Mm -hmm. and, and so the music that's inside sounds like this cover. Hmm. It's just very, uh, it's very trippy and it's a blues music, but it's 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 a it's a modern sound. Pastoral kind of maybe. Pastoral okay. feel, and on the inside. It's a lot of acoustics, perhaps, acoustic, or acoustic uh, acoustic songs because of Danny Kerwin. Right, right. Uh, you know, so here's Mick Fleetwood. Uh -huh. and here's uh, John McPhee. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Spencer, who was short-lived in the band, but what is so great about this is that you have these kind of pastoral, acoustic, highly melodic songs like Danny Kerman, but you get the king, the king of, you know, kind of secret king of English blues. You know, there's a lot of more famous folks, but, but Peter Green was a great songwriter and mm -hmm. had just wonderful singer and had this guitar, a menacing guitar tone, this pure blues. Meaty. Yeah, just, just, and yeah. so this album becomes famous because of the hit single, Oh Well. Because I think Oh Well was a single and this came out a little bit later. But I like how they put this, the track listing inside mm -hmm. and then they put the name of the band on the back. Yeah. And that's kind of, I think it's kind of cool. Because you kind of come to it in layers. It's yeah. like, okay, and then you, oh, okay. Yeah. There's, when it came on the radio the first time, everyone that I knew, uh, who ever, ever lusted after playing a guitar, that's their, that's one of the first triggers for them to go, oh. It's, but in here, there's these songs that are just kind of blues jams, and then some very simple but clever, very pop-oriented uh, blues music. But all of it's filtered through this guy because he's he's just he's this great writer. He's written mm -hmm. the Green Man Alicia already. He's written Black Magic Woman. He has Oh Well, 
and he's just kind of throwing all these elements together. Uh, I know Victor uh, uh, from Camper talked about this album. He, he mentioned it on his Facebook page, and he called it like Baroque. Because uh, they're pulling different world influences too, oh, right? Oh, there's so the Beatles were bluesier. There's an elegance to it. It's 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 very wide ranging, and there's these very delicate songs, and some really great blues jams. And there's not a wasted minute. He's just he's a blues guy, and he yet he, he was informed had a little he was informed a little deeper. Sure. And it's. In probably his belief of what blues music could be, how it could grow and mature and be a populist blues music and still have its integrity in a band that totally understands what he's about and equally contribute. Kerwin and... and uh, Three guitar band. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, Jeremy Spencer was more... He ended up being more like a... Almost like a 50s kind of a thing. He wrote some kind of like 50s pops things and... Was a cool singer unto himself. Danny Kerwin is also a good singer, but I like he was wearing like a suit, and then he has like 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 some Roman sandals on. It is well, that was it were Roman times. So but if you really wanted to hear, to me, the greatest Fleetwood Mac album is them playing on because this has this has all their blues roots, but it has some of that pop mystery. But any blues riff that I know comes from this album. Yeah. <laughs> because it just became a part of my it's persona. It's like the blues bible for you. It's just it. anyone yeah. who, who has it, it's one of their favorite records, just bar none. shape I'm in. I can't say I ain't pretty and my legs are thin. Don't ask me what I think of you. I might not give the answer that you want me to. Now when I talked to God, I knew he'd understand. He said, stick by me and I'll be your garden hand. <sighs> now would you believe that? We don't believe that. So don't ask me what I think of you. I might not give the answer that you want me to.
In part one, Greg Eckler began his Inland Empire music career by joining a number of local bands. By 1971, Eckler reached a crossroads in his life. First of all, he fell in love and married Taryn, a bond that would last the rest of their lives. In a 2008 interview he gave to San Bernardino Sun reporter Michelle Nolan, he said, I was burned out on the sex, drugs, and rock and roll thing. I was searching. I just had to have a new direction. He had a religious awakening in the night sky of the desert and decided to devote his life to glorifying God. He drew inspiration from Psalm 150 in the Bible, which spoke of praising God through music. Eckler formed the Psalm 150 group. They were active from 1971 to 1976. They played churches, auditoriums, correctional institutions, and occasionally public schools. In that same 2008 interview, Greg said of the band, We were pioneering in those days. The music was upbeat, ahead of its time. The downside? Most churches were still traditional and not ready for us. In 1974, the band released an LP, Making Up Your Mind, distributed by Mana Records. It earned a Grammy nomination for Best Soul Gospel Album. Over the years, many local musicians drifted in and out of Psalm 150. Palm Desert-born bassist Jack Blades was one of them. In the 80s and 90s, he experienced success as a member of Night Ranger and Damn Yankees. But back in the late 1970s, he was just another musician looking for his next gig. Eckler's friendship with Jack led them to working together once again. Saxophonist Jerry Martini was an original member of Sly and the Family Stone. He left the band in 1975 after some disagreements with leader Sly Stone. In 1978, he formed the funk rock band Rubicon. Jack Blades had previously crossed paths with Martini, and the bassist was asked to join the group. In turn, Blades recommended Eckler as the drummer, and Eckler passed the audition. Rubicon's best-known song was I'm Gonna Take Care of Everything, which spent 11 weeks on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1978, peaking at number 28. The group released two albums, Rubicon and American Dream. Their highest profile gig was an appearance at Ontario's Cal Jam 2 on March 18, 1978, where they played in front of a crowd of more than 300,000. By early 1979, Rubicon's label was bought out by another, and as a result, the band was lost in the shuffle and dropped from the label. Eckler returned to the IE and briefly became a part of a reboot of local club band Squeeze with Bob Angelin and Jeff Nicholson, a.k.a. the original Nikki Six. Enter Rick Nelson, who needed a new drummer for his Stone Canyon band. Eckler jumped at the opportunity. He stayed with the band over a year, then decided to pursue other musical avenues. His inactivity didn't last long because surf music historian John Blair asked him to play drums in his IE surf revivalist band, John and the Night Riders. Fellow local musicians Jeff Nicholson and Dave Ronsky also came along for the ride. Eckler's next musical stop was a six-year stint with the Daryl Mansfield Band. Mansfield was a Christian blues singer and harmonica player who had a large following in the contemporary Christian music community. The band toured the U.S., Europe, and Asia extensively. Other IE musicians like Jeff Nicholson, James Felix, and Bob Anglin joined Eckler in the touring band. After leaving the Mansfield band, Greg and his wife left for an extended church mission to Vienna, Austria. He returned to the USA in 2005, and he was ready for his next music project. That occurred in 2008, when he staged the reunion of his 1970s group, Psalm 150. He wanted closure with the group, and in his words, there's a real bond among band members. We're lifelong friends. In 2009, he continued his lifelong passion for music with his next endeavor. IE music historian Mike Stacks said of Eckler's next musical move, 
He was the driving force behind the Inland Empire Musicians Hall of Fame, which gives recognition to the rich history of that area and all of the fine musicians who came from there. I have many fond memories of helping out with the concert that launched the organization and reunited many friends and musicians on stage and off. The event that Stax refers to is the Inland Empire Musicians Hall of Fame, Steve Horde Memorial Concert, and inaugural inductions, held in Yukaipa on August 29, 2009. The organization continues today as a Facebook page where all are invited to share their memories of IE music history. Greg Eckler will be remembered by his family and friends for his love of and devotion to God and music. If you held a notebook of protest songs From Greenwich Village to the White House lawn You'd hold the story of how a river ran Past broken fences on the promise Promise land We'd say it forever In cafes we'd stand In fields, farmlands Dead flower hands Stone and naked Just past Duluth Like freedom was a highway I wish that was true house 